Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Nerd 2 by and Bo Oliver. We're joined here today with Aaron the Nerd 2 Monkey, and we are back to review the new Amazon Prime show. Uh, we did the bit. Yeah. That's what they do yep. whenever they say it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But overall, the show has been very entertaining to me. And uh, we got the chance to talk about it a little bit on the pod. Haven't had the chance to review episodes one through three. But there's a lot of stuff to talk about because not only do you have the superhero aspect, but you have the detective noir side plot here with Damien Darkblood, <laughs> one of my favorite characters. I but like him, yeah. There's a lot to talk about, and I think this was another entertaining episode, seeing Mark once again out on a date with Amber, having to balance his hero life with his personal life. And I always thought that was an interesting way to tell the Superman story, is to start him as a young adult, 17, 18, coming out of high school, going into college. And it's that balance that's very interesting when it comes to being a young hero especially being in his shoes. Yeah, I've been loving this show so far. Uh, so much so that this morning I woke up, didn't go to Disney Plus. Falcon Winter Soldier, I love you, but... You, Where that meme? You get second. You get second. Has anybody made that? Or the guy looking back? He's walking with Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and he's looking back at Mark. You should make that. Yeah, I should. Yeah. Get Teddy on that. He's not doing anything. <laughs> But yeah, this has been a fun show to watch. I mean, it's it brings me back to when I was a kid waking up for those like Friday morning, Saturday morning cartoons. Same thing, but for adults. And this show, I think it does balance that very well. Like you said, the hero aspect and the coming of age aspect. And, you know, it is a bit darker, but it still has like that wholesome kind of cartoonish feel to it as well. So it's a, a, I think it's a wonderful mix of that. And I think so far all the characters have been great. They're intriguing, and there's just a lot going on, especially with Omni-Man. I mean, that ending of episode one was absolutely shocking. And I, I still don't know where I stand with him because, like I said on the pod, like obviously he's not a good dude, right? He just fucking brutally murdered all of his friends. Typically good people don't do that. But the way he takes Mark under his wing, then he, like, he seems like a very good father. And we've seen him snap a couple times, but he's trying with Mark. So it's kind of like that weird, I don't know, sometimes he seems like a good dude. Sometimes he's just this huge dick. Well, when Cecil in this episode exercises Damien, which I thought was hilarious. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way that they use technology to recite the words of that book and send him back to hell. And the guy feels bad for him. Uh, he's like, he's not dead. He's just in hell. He says, the reason that I'm doing this to you, Damien, is because you can't see the gray, mm -hmm. that not everyone is black and white. And I, I think, yeah, Omni-Man, he is that character where we're still not totally inside of his head. Uh, we don't know his motivations for doing this, but they are foreshadowing some things with his character. Like in this episode, when he pointed out Julius Caesar, he's like, look what he's been reduced to world's greatest conqueror. And now he's, you know, just taking pictures with tourists. Mm -hmm. I wonder Does he know if that's not the same guy. No, he might not know. He seems to have, like, he doesn't, his grasp of time is yeah, yeah very loose. Uh, I've been married for a few years, honey. I wonder if there is something deeper to that and why he did that. Well, it's a it's, um, conspiracy that he only knows the answer to, right? Yeah. And that's why Cecil, I think, is my favorite character, because him running the GDA, him being kind of like the Madeline Stilwell of this universe, that relationship is so icy, because he obviously relies on, on Omni-Man when he needs him, but Omni-Man refuses to ever join the Guardians and take orders. So Cecil, the way he's playing it is, you know, let me let me wait for a time to bring this to light. Mm -hmm. Or maybe that I can use this to manipulate Omni-Man, use it as blackmail or something like that. So, yeah, it's just ho it's so hard to pinpoint where this character stands. But like you said, the moments between Omni-Man and Mark are very wholesome, mm -hmm. very uh, endearing. And you see that he does truly love and care about his family. And that's the thing. They're not mutually exclusive. You could do horrible things and still come home, home to your family like everything's fine. Yeah, definitely. And it's been fun watching Mark kind of get his powers and kind of grow into this role i think that you know he's he's obviously the main character and it's just fun been fun watching his journey and i think all the supporting characters around him too have been i've enjoyed very much so far i liked robot but now i don't know what, what robot's deal is yeah what do you think is going on there he obviously wants something to do with the cloning technology because mm -hmm. he frees the mauler brothers and then one of them goes back and reclones his brother and then he, he like, steals a swab of blood from, what's that guy's Rexplode. name? Rexplode. Rex. Mm -hmm. From Rexplode. <laughs> uh, and then he goes to this, like, deformed he make the corpse team? at the end. He's not very good, right? He just throws little light-up bombs. Yeah, he stinks. No, he's not very, uh, that's got to be nepotism. 
Cecil's grand grandson. <laughs> Yeah, no, Robot, uh, he's another interesting character. And I, I imagine that this is where the show is heading for a lot of these characters, where mm. because the world is so fucked up. And they're, I mean, they've leaned into it, obviously, but like you said, it, it does still have that feel of a Saturday morning Justice League cartoon at mm. times, but it is R-rated. So it's interesting the way that they've been able to balance that so far. And But like like I said, we've seen moments of pure darkness. That that I couldn't get that out of my head after watching Omni-Man slaughter those guys. I mean, that's how it would go, right? We yeah, always talk about that like with Batman Superman. versus Superman. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's like like just he, fucking crush his head. Yeah, well, that's my cousin Cam. I mentioned it on the pod. He was so happy to see a black Batman finally. It's like I connected with that character on a personal level for one episode. <laughs> so he got his <laughs> brains splattered all over the place. The way he just killed those guys, yeah, that was, that was intense. But I, I wonder, you know, I'm not sure how many episodes we have for this first season. So I wonder which episode is going to be the turning point where... Omni Man finds himself on the ropes. Yeah, I thought the scene between him and Damien was really great in this episode. They can't really hurt him, but he was still there to to threaten him, and he eventually does end up sending Damien back to hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so Omni Man. It's not only that he's super powerful; he can play the game a bit. He can play the mind games. Yeah, he's been one of my favorite characters so far. I mean, just the detective and the way he talks too. <laughs> <laughs> right, broken English. A bit. Yeah, but he's um he's a lot of mystery surrounding him, and I kind of think that's a kind of cool concept, like him having to bring justice to other people in order to save his soul or whatever. Right. And well, it looked like he was still there at the end, right? In the end credit scene. Yeah, he's in there in the closet growling, and just like the fearlessness of him to basically confront or actively investigate Omni Man with no fear of any repercussions. And Omni Man, I mean. I wonder how powerful he is because Omni Man like could just kill him, but he doesn't. People were speculating over that. How strong is Damian Darkblood? Can he mm-hmm. fight? I always like that. He's like a combination of Hellboy and Rorschach, mm-hmm. and obviously Rorschach eventually does get obliterated in the end. I would like it that he isn't. I thought he was going to stick around, and like I said, he is there at the end credits. So we'll see what he ends up doing, but hopefully he can throw down because what we've seen Omni Man do so far. One of my favorite bits of the season was when the aliens kept coming to attack. Mm-hmm. They couldn't adjust to the that they kept aging too quickly, yeah, and yeah. they would solve it and return, solve it and return. And that's where you see Invincible really start to come into his own, where he realizes his own potential, how strong he is, until they just can't handle the attack. And Omni-Man swoops in, goes through the portal, and just fucking obliterates their entire planet. Epic. Yeah. Absolutely epic. So I don't know who's touching that man. Like, that's Superman at max power. That's what Superman could do. It's just a fucking human bullet destroying a planet. Well, it's probably going to be Invincible, right? Right. He's yeah, got to... kind of setting him up to... Yeah. I mean, he probably is the second, or has the potential to be it, the second strongest superpowered being on Earth. So that's why it's so fun watching him figure out his powers. Mm-hmm. Like when he's on Mars, in hindsight, he was never in real trouble because the squids were never going to affect him. But he's still scared. Yeah, it's still he, there's still some wonder to his adventures. And obviously, it's only been four episodes. So, but th- that's why I like young Superman, coming of age Superman, because it's fun for the audience. But that that whole adventure on Mars, what did you think about that? Did you like the CG animation? Did it throw you off at all? When they had like some, I think Mars featured some computer animation. The ships. I didn't really notice. Yeah. No. Um. Maybe I should. I pay thought more. it looked good. Yeah, I mean, the whole show looks good, I think. Yeah, that was, that was a cool sequel. I mean, one of the squids, I guess, took one of the astronauts. What would they say they do? They kind of... They're they, scattered. It's like a hive mind. Yeah. So when one of them has a host, they can all be controlled by one. Okay. So <laughs> they just got wiped out at the end. Yeah, I guess That's so. That's another aspect of I love this show. If something, like, things just happen, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like, oh, genocide, the Martians have been wiped out. What are the repercussions of this going to be? I mean, obviously they're coming to Earth next, but yeah, that was scary. <laughs> I like how they say English is Martian. Like, oh, we don't speak English, we speak Martian. Yeah, that's a <laughs> nice little science thing that maybe life comes from Mars. Maybe. Yeah. But that was uh, obviously <laughs> when he's like, there's life on Mars. He's like, yeah, where do you think Martian man comes from, <laughs> dummy? <laughs> yeah, but Cecil sends him on that mission. And like you mentioned, it's trying to feel him out. See where his heart is. Yeah, it could be their only contingency for Omni Man. If if they Invincible, as we know, is a pure hero, then you know even if it's Dad, that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a tough confrontation if he does find out and what to do. It's there's so many different avenues you can go there, but 
I assume that it's going to be something where when they do find out, he's going to be the only one standing between Omni-Man. Right, and uh, I mean, that's his father, so yeah. you imagine it's going to be, he's going to feel very conflicted. And the, the closer that he gets with his teammates, the closer that he gets with humanity, it's just going to make that decision even harder. And I still wonder if they're going to open up the lore when it comes to Viltrium, what do they do? What is their true purpose? Why was he really sent to Earth? They, they act like they're on like they're missionaries on peacekeeping missions to bring civilizations into the future. That could all be true, or that could just be a a fancy way of saying we take over your planet. Right, or it could be like an Ultron scenario where they feel the only true way, like how the Avengers, like Ultron saw the Avengers as the world's problems. Right, it could be he sees the Guardians as the world's problems. It's more of a the. Like, the presence of superheroes is bringing on greater threats. Yes. Something like that. That's an interesting idea. Yeah, because obviously it was a strategic move. He takes out the Guardians, and then that really just leaves him. And he talks about it. It, it kind of leaves a power vacuum, even though it's not really a power vacuum, but it gives his son the opportunity to maybe step into the spotlight. So grooming a successor while taking out your the predecessors, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's a... It's obviously a fucked up show, and I just I just want to get into this guy's mind. You think Amber knows? I think so. Yeah, Seems Amber. Seems like she does. They write her as a very smart character, and he's very like nonchalant about his powers. Like he just flies, like in the middle of the street. Yeah, yeah. He just runs away and just starts flying. It's like I saw you out my window. You know what? I hope they uh, explain how they got their powers. I wonder if they ever will explain that. If there's a reason that some people just have superpowers, or if that just goes unexplained. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's a vast array of powers. Like we saw Rex Blode. Eve has some... I don't even know how to explain her powers. It's like but... an invisible woman almost. Yeah. Like these these shields, these energy shields. But yeah, that's another interesting threat uh, plot line moving forward is Mark and Eve and Amber. Cause... Nice little love triangle. Yeah. Good for Mark. Good for Mark. <laughs> Bad for the girls, but yeah, yeah. Good, good for Mark. <laughs> Someone's going to be upset. Yeah, you got the, the superhero girlfriend, mm -hmm. possibly, and just the normal girlfriend and they are very similar characters they are intelligent and they're helping mark in different ways you know amber in his personal life and eve in his superhero life i imagine that you know with high school kids man they're always breaking up and getting with other people and then breaking up again and getting back and they're fucking <laughs> <laughs> i i really thought that omni man was gonna push that guy off the mountain when they got to mount everest <laughs> i thought he was about to do like a homelander <sighs> He just nah, he can't do that in front of Mark. No, he can't do it in front of Mark. He, I wonder. That's. I think that will happen eventually. He snaps in front of Mark. I thought the Martian King was going to tell him like, "Oh, you come from Viltrium? Get the fuck out of here, you crazy imperialist, mm. you conqueror." I was like, huh? Do you think we'll see? I think we'll see that planet. Yeah, it seems like it still exists. Yeah. Well, I, that's the thing. The world building has been really good so far, where I want them to explore the things that they've hinted at. Um, so, yeah, I think eventually they will. They, they've got a lot of avenues to explore now. It's like you said with the robot character. There's a lot of great subplots. And the cold opening of this episode, again, featuring a Clancy Brown character out on an expedition in Egypt or somewhere, mm -hmm. bringing back to life an ancient pharaoh demon thing i don't know <laughs> what the fuck is happening there you got two enemies right now you got the pharaoh demon and you got the the squids and robot and robot yeah and omni man and omni man yeah no there's uh some threads here there's some threads that they got to tie together yeah I'm, I'm definitely intrigued i think that like especially this coming out of nowhere like i really didn't know about it until it was already out and everyone was talking about it first three episodes are out and i've blew through those first three episodes and it's I just can't. It's another show week to week. I'm anticipating, and I think that's this is a good show for the week to week. I think I want to watch episode five now, but you got to be patient. And I appreciate the run times, forty minute run times yeah. for an animated show. It's not something that you usually see. I like the. I guess you can call them like cold endings. Yeah, right. Where you have the credits run for a little bit, you hear people talking. Yeah. Yeah, the cold ending. What did you think about the uh, cloning sequence with the Mahler brothers? I guess they're just made of hamburger meat. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> That's kind of hilarious. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I imagine Teddy would make his kids. <laughs> Just grind them into hamburger meat, pop them out. I love how every time they do something, a Run the Jewels song comes on. It's a yeah. Badass was... Run the Jewels song. The music has been great. Well, it's interesting because they touch on power scaling. When um, Omni Man is teaching Mark how to use his powers, he tells him he has to exercise and, you know, there are certain things that you can do, can't do, so, stuff that you need to work on. And then they give us a scene like that where it's an attempt at showing science in this world. The way that they combine the fantastical elements of superheroism 
and just real science I've I've appreciated. Now, is this clone going to have the same memories as the other Mauler twin? I imagine that it's just... Because um, that's got to be an awkward conversation. That, th- like, they don't even know who... Like, the original's been dead forever. Yeah. For a long time. They're all just think they're their new original. Yeah, they always think that there's a the new cycle. original. Right, yeah. So the guy who just created the new one's going to be like, you know, I'm the original. Yeah. And then he's going to die, and the other guy's going to... It's kind of freaky. I don't like clones. I don't like clo- thinking of clones in that context. Of me being cloned and then someone kills me. A lot of burger clone. meat. <laughs> yeah. I really don't know what Robot's plan is. He could be like an Ultron character too. I wonder if that's like a... Because I was wondering in, th- in this episode if he was becoming more angry with humanity. He's just seeing how clumsy and dumb his some of his teammates are. And yeah. you know the Guardians were just slaughtered and no one really knows who did it. So I was wondering if he was just trying to... If he was turning evil. But at the end there, I mean, maybe he's like trying to create a body for himself. Like a robot yeah, instead what of being was a robot. That thing? Yeah, it was like a like a deformed clone yeah. almost. Smoke. So maybe he's like been trying to and he's gonna use what's his face's blood? Uh Rexplode. Why would you use Rex? <laughs> he's gonna make blood? like a Rexplode Mauler brother and that guy in the tube clone for himself. Hmm. Hey man, Powerpuff Girls gotta throw everything on the pot, mix it up. <laughs> Chemical X. Can't wait for that live action show. The GDA is also very interesting. I I think that they're going to reveal more backstory for a lot of these side characters, like possibly getting him more into Olga. But even a character like Cecil, how did he get his scars? There's some history there. You know, are are we going to see Cecil before the scar? Want to know how I got these scars? He's very, yeah, I could see him doing that with his voice. Well, I'm the Joker, baby. (laughs) And like you said, I'm excited for episode five. Friday mornings have become invincible Friday mornings. Sorry, Falcon. Friday afternoons. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe Saturday mornings. Oh, wow. That's disrespectful. Yeah. Hey, I got to take. I gotta soak it in. <laughs> Maybe get a little rewatch. Tell you what, though. Falcon and Winter Soldier, they're about to go off. I can feel it in my bones. <laughs> I can't wait for you to hate this next episode. <laughs> There's just something missing about this show. Well, would you look at that? It's finally over. Hey guys, Bo Oliver here for one final send-off. Now, before I beg you guys to like and share this video, I'd like to thank our very special Patreon pledgers. We are very proud of the community we've been able to build here at NerdSoup, and it would not have been possible without our Patreon supporters. You guys are the true MVPs of this channel. Everything I've said, you keep the fridge full, you keep the lights on. There aren't enough words to thank you guys, but we'll do it anyway. Thank you. And we have a few videos coming up that have been suggested to us by Patreon pledgers. My Hero Academia, Neon Genesis Evangelion, and Full Metal Alchemist will be reviewed by Marissa and yours truly, and Castlevania, which will be reviewed by Marissa and Aaron. And if you'd like to consider donating to our Patreon page, you can visit patreon.com slash nerdsoup and check out some of the rewards we offer to our listeners. And really, we'd like to thank everyone who takes the time out of their day to watch our videos. Patreon pledge or not, your support is what keeps us motivated to keep giving the world our opinions on movies and TV shows and video games and pop culture, even though no one asked for it. We're still here, we're still yapping, and we hope Hope you continue to join us. I'm Bo Oliver and I support this message.